Retirement. That is the recommendation from Sumo's Compliance Committee as to the punishment Coach Tokitsukaze should get for breaking coronavirus rules. More details on the rules he broke in the link above. Sources close to the coach say it doesn't matter, he's opted to retire anyway, just months before his oldest son, junior sumo star Hirokazu, joins the stable. Tokitsukaze training, meanwhile, continues to look and feel normal, right down to Shodai's negative assessments at the end. I don't know if I'll be joining the Kokugikan practice sessions this weekend, he said. I haven't exactly been fighting many bouts, which is a source of concern. Hmm, what to do? Shodai clarified he'd been letting the lower rankers bump against him, but had not yet resumed full-blooded combat with Yutakayama. I don't want to overdo things, he concluded. I've become more prudent since the injury. That's quite a contrast to fellow Ozeki Asanoyama, who fought 20 bouts on Monday, as he itches to test out a host of new strategies on his stablemates. I want my body in a more compact shape, he said. Sometimes at the Tachiai, you see, my upper body straightens too much, and I want to be more forward-leaning. That's also in marked contrast to Shodai. Against the likes of Terasawa, Fukai, and Asagyokuse, the Ozeki generally refrained from lunging for an outside left straight away, choosing instead to thrust, dig in with the right, and add the left as a finishing touch. I've got to widen my repertoire, he added. Fit my strategy to the guy I'm facing. Use my head more, basically. I've got the physique, but I'm lacking in technique and heart. As to expand on the latter, he said, I'm just so weak in those big bouts. I just keep losing them. And I think the mental preparation begins with my everyday life. There are things I'm doing which I need to change. When my urge to win is too strong, my sumo just goes off course. So rather than, I want to win, my mindset must be, he's not getting the better of me. Asanayama finished by thanking his fans for all the Valentine's Day chocolates they'd sent. As far as they know, he's still unattached. Also hurling himself into practice bouts is Ozeki contender Terunofuji, some of whose powerful efforts were uploaded to Twitter by coach Ajigawa, ex Aminishiki. There's still a long way to go until opening day, so I'm just tuning up bit by bit, he said. And as for regaining Ozeki, I'm not overly thinking about it. Just as usual, if I prepare properly for each and every day, results will follow, equal to the sum total of my efforts. If I ultimately fail, it's down to lack of strength. And if I succeed, then great. And when asked to compare with his previous spell at Ozeki, the comeback king said, At that time, I was the youngest guy in the top ranks. But now we're finally at the stage where several guys around my age are climbing to the top, and that spurs me on. But I got to where they are way before them, and it's with that pride that I continue to fight. He won't commit to the Kokugikan practice yet, but I expect him to appear. And finally, it's time for Mitake Umi to promise a double-digit score again, after 15 more practice bouts with his Dewanomi colleagues. I guess those of you looking in from the outside, when you see lower rankers carrying off the title, are thinking that the gap between top and bottom is narrowing. So in response, to prove my worth as a Sanyaku-level wrestler, I'd like to be posting double figures as the norm, he said. He adds that he's been working on his agility, more on that in my feature on him later this week. March 2021 marks exactly six years since Mitake Umi turned pro and he's vowed to make it a special anniversary tournament for his fans.